Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. Uh, today, we're going to go back up to the Great White North and talk about what's going on there, this kind of war within a war that's erupted over the last 18 months and is really hitting a crescendo right now between the Hells Angels and the Rizzuto mob. Uh, this is going to be more of kind of a, a analytical quick hitter, um, not necessarily news, but I've spent the last couple of weeks talking to my sources and getting you know, government documents sent to me and, and talking to authorities up in Montreal. And uh, I am going to throw out three names of what I'm being told and what I'm going to categorize as X factors, three guys that come from the Rizzuto uh, mob and, and the traditional Montreal mafia, uh, three X factors that I'm told could play a difference in who wins this war, who, who's the victor, uh, who who falls to defeat, whether it's the Rizzuto mob or the Hells Angels and Marty Robert, the, the boss of the Hells Angels in, in Montreal, who's making a big power play here and, and trying to take over kind of all of Canada's rackets, uh, become the boss of bosses. And these three guys play a big role and if he's going to be successful in that. All three of these guys know Marty Robert, have a, a personal friendship with him, have a business relationship with him. And I think it, it remains to be seen if they're going to back him uh, or they get a uh, kind of double back and, and get behind the Rizzuto. So the three names are uh, Davide Baldi Barbario, who we've talked about the last uh, about month or so. And then an, an old school guy that if you've been following in Montreal uh, over the last couple of decades, you've probably heard of uh, Antonio uh, Petro Tantonio, AKA Tony uh, Suzuki, um, he's about 60 years old, dates all the way back to old man Vito Rizzuto, um, and uh, a guy that is very networked into um, illicit activity around the globe. Uh, his name popped up in the El Chapo trial uh, in New York, um, <laughs> one of the biggest prosecutions in U.S. history, and El Chapo uh you know, on this, on, uh, people at that trial made reference to Tony Suzuki as being the the, the point man for not just uh, wholesale narcotics trafficking on the Rizzuto end in Quebec, but also the guy that the Sin Sinaloa cartel uh, did all their business with there. And then finally, uh, um, kind of like Baldi Barbario, a younger guy from the kind of the younger generation is in his 40s, uh, Joey Gator, a.k.a. Giuseppe Vucarazzo. And uh, he's 48. Uh, Baldi Barbario is, is 44. And uh, all three of these guys are big time. Well, I should say two of them are big time up and comers. And then uh, Tony Suzuki Tony Suzuki is the OG. All three of them have survived murder contracts on their head throughout this decade and a half ordeal that I've coined the, you know, the great Canadian mafia war that erupted after Vito Rizzuto, the, uh, the most legendary mafia don in, in canadian history uh had to go serve some prison time in the united states and this whole family imploded um from within and then all of a sudden you know the, the sharks smell blood and people that had once been allies are now enemies takes us to the hell's angels who had always been on very good terms and had a strong business ties with the risuttos uh for the last 30 plus years and then at some point in the last year and a half that relationship frayed and it looks like uh, they are now adversaries. Um, Joey Gator and Tony Suzuki both attended Marty Robert's wedding, which was a big flashy affair about five years ago. He married a underworld princess, Annie Arbic, uh, whose mom was the queen pan of Quebec uh, in terms of uh, wholesale marijuana. And it was a glitzy affair. You had luminaries from all these different criminal factions that, that came um, to celebrate Marty Robert's wedding. And the, the representatives from the Rizzutos was Tony Suzuki and, and Joey Gator. Um, Baldi Barbario, we're hearing, you know, could be the top guy on the street right now for the Rizzutos running day-to-day uh, -day activity, the street boss. Um came up under Ponytail DeVito, who, who uh, was assassinated in prison, uh, cyanide poisoning. But uh, 
uh, Baldy Barbario is a is a player. And uh, there were rumors unfounded at this point, um, uh, not confirmed, but there were rumors that if Chit Del Basso, who it looks like joined forces with Marty Robert and the Hells Angels to try to take out Vito Rizzuto's son and successor, Leonardo Rizzuto, uh, back in a uh, highway assassination attempt back in the spring that was unsuccessful. The rumors were that if that had been successful and Chit Del Basso had removed Vito, uh, not Vito, Leonardo Rizzuto from power, that uh, Baldi Barbario was going to jump on board with Chit and uh, Marty Robert. So where he stands right now, I don't know, but taking his temperature, uh, you know, less than a year ago, talking to these sources, it looks like he was open to to joining Marty Robert. Um, Tony Suzuki, we know that he's been involved in insurgents of the past. Uh, in 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 the timeline of this current uh, mob war, uh, back in the late 2000s, early 2010s, he had uh, thrown his lot in with Salvatore Sal, the Ironworker Montana, the Banano crime family boss that got deported from New York to Canada, took advantage or tried to take advantage of when Vito Rizzuto went to prison and then, you know, kind of rallied some of Vito's former allies into this insurrection that fell apart. And there was like, as the Rizzuto crime family was uh, cratering, so was this, this insurgent faction and, and Montana ended up dead uh, in 2011. But in the Hours before Montana died, he was meeting with Tony Suzuki. So we know that Tony Suzuki has a past history of being willing to uh, go against the Rizzutos. And then Joey Gator, although there is no, there, ha there hasn't been any rumors or any situations brought up in court, court filings and court documents the way that uh, we have when it comes to Baldy Barbario and, and Tony Suzuki. Um Joey Gator is one of these guys. He, he's worked very closely with the Hells Angels over the last 20 years, uh, 25 years. He's a guy that is kind of a overseer at, you know, boots on the ground uh, at the, the street level. He's a guy that I, I've been told oversees a, a series of kind of JV mobs that move drugs and guns uh, for the Rizzutos. But for years they were doing it with the Hells Angels. So Joey Gator was uh, you got on a day to day basis dealing with Hells Angels. So. You know, he's a he's 48 years old. Barbario's 44. These are young guys that have a lot of time left uh you know in the uh in the underworld. Leonardo Rizzuto's only 50, 53, Marty Robert's 49. So these are all relatively younger guys. And uh it should be really interesting to see where those three guys land in this in this conflict. Um so you know, those are my three X factors to look forward to in 2024. Who could play a big role and who wins this uh, wins this war between the Hell's Angels and the uh, Montreal Mafia? Uh, Baldi Barbario, Tony Suzuki, and Joey Gator. That's my analysis, and uh, I will be giving you more information and analysis from what's going on up in Canada and the Great White North with this uh, ever evolving bloodshed that's that seems to be happening on a weekly basis yeah, 15 years after it started uh so we'll keep you updated um for og pod i'm scott bernstein out